Okay, so a lot of people struggle with these um, proving identities because it's very difficult to look at this one over cos theta minus cos theta over one plus sine theta and go up, I can make that tan theta. Um, e even the smartest guys are not going to be able to envision all five steps, you know, that it's going to take. Um, yes, sir. So what we have to do is there's certain things we always have to do um, when when we try and work these things out. The, the first thing is, um, you know, if you if you see like a um a sine two theta or a cos two theta, that you have to convert those to um your single ratios. Um so okay. if you know sine two theta, that's a double angle, um, is actually also equal to two sine theta cos theta. So that's one of the things. Um you also have to look at uh, power space. Um, cos 2 theta um, and your formula sheet. Have you got it there with you? Um, uh, I do have my formula sheet with me, but uh, we've been only given, like, like the identities that we've been given is like sine square theta plus cos square theta is equal to 1. And then, like, cos square theta can also be 1 minus sin square theta. Okay. And the same yeah. goes in. Mm -hmm. Okay, so don't worry about this. So these will be these will come be these will come up later then. So don't worry about these. Um, okay. So we'll forget about that for now, and we'll just highlight this one's important. But of course, the other ones are derived, right? Um, yeah. If I keep cos squared theta on the left hand side and I move it to the right, you know, I get cos squared theta equals one minus sine squared theta. That's that's just a um, rearranging the formula. Right? And sine squared theta yes. is equal to one minus cos squared theta. So we actually only really need to know um, this one because oops, sorry, um, this one because we can work the others out. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, now, when we when we want to work out when we want to solve an equation, we were always told. Yeah, find the lowest common denominator. And it's no different um, in these. Mm. So, you know, like for example, if I if I had one over two plus one over three equals x, the way I would solve that would be to get well to add these up and, and so I make it they're both over six. Um, you know, because it's three over six and two over six. Um you know, and then I get three plus two over six, which is five over six. Yeah. So I could have actually just done it like this. And okay. so we, we kind of want to do the same thing with this. So I can't see the answer. I don't know what it is, but I, I, I know that that's what you should probably be doing. So okay. the cos theta um, one plus sine theta will be the LCD. Yeah. So the one gets times by the one plus sine theta. And then the other one is just multiplied by cos theta. Uh, yes. Well, that's cos squared theta, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, so I'm looking at that and going, right, Um, that's that's fine. Um, the problem at the top is I've got, I've got lots of, um, I've got a sine and a cos, which, which is difficult to deal with. But we know that from this derived formula, we can make this one. So the first thing was, was yeah, yeah. LCD. The other, the other thing I would recommend is turning your tans into sines and cosses, but you haven't got any tans. So... Mm. Tans sine over cos, yeah? and then the other thing okay. is, you know, look for your look for your sine square theta, and then choose the one that's going to give you. You want to have all sines or all cosses, right? All sine or all cos, because then you can then you have sort of a, a trinomial. So I'm going to have yes. plus sine theta. Plus, and in that cos squared theta, I'm going to make one 
minus sine squared theta. And now okay. I have uh, the one minus sine squared theta. Oh, this was a minus cos. A minus cos. Yeah, so do you see this was minus here? Oh, yes, yes. Um, so it's going to be minus. That's quite important because it just helps me. This makes it easier to deal with because then this is a minus here and a plus here. Okay, yeah. Um, yeah. Because I know that I'm going to have a trinomial. It's much easier to deal with um, sine squared theta. So I end up having sine squared theta. Mm. Um, and then do you notice that the ones go away? Uh, yes. Plus sine theta over. Um, so I didn't write this. So I'm just going to say it's this thing here divided by the cos theta one plus sine theta, right? Oh, uh, yeah. The bottom thing. Um, and so then this then gets simplified to sine squared theta plus minus. And then I can take, and then I have the cos theta. Now I can now see the answer, right? Because I can see that when I take out sine theta, I'm going to get one um, plus sine theta. So right. on the numerator, you would like take a common uh, factor Yes, oh. yes. Not mistaken. Okay. Correct. Because now we can see, ah, perfect. It, it cancels. I'm going to write the sign theta plus one the other way around the bottom. Okay. And then it's sine over cos, which is 10, and we've done it. Hmm. Okay. Okay, so... Um, I, I rushed through the last bit. Okay, but it does it does make sense, yeah. That cancels. Because uh, this we thing. have done factorization with a trigger equation, like with yeah. identities and all that. Mm. Yeah, this one was a bit nicer because we just had to take out the sine theta. Sometimes you have a trina. Mm. Um, yes, but uh, you you told me like you can like sort of like. Yeah. Take those variables and like say like so if I get an equation with like sin and cos and all that like I could change it to like x like let sin be x and then it'll make more sense and it'll be more clear. Well remembered, yes. So I could say let yeah. sin theta equals x, yeah. And then I could have made this x squared plus x. Yes. And then and then it's much easier because I know ah oh, okay, I can take out an x. And then I'm left with x plus one. And then I simply yes. put the sine theta back in. Okay, good. Glad you, you remember that. That's excellent. Um, let's look at the next And then yeah. for number 1.2.2, I believe that you would have to like take the denominators and like you have to see like yeah. what if how can like the denominator be zeros? Because that will be undefined if that makes but correct. I'm correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, in this one you don't have to, but if you were, if you were solving, um, mm. but this is a proof. But yeah, um, we know that this bottom can't be zero, right? So cos theta cannot equal zero. Yeah. And then, and therefore, um, you know, theta can't be ninety. Cannot equal ninety, but that you don't do for the proofs. That's just when we are solving for an equation. Okay. Oh, but this one's only two marks, so. Oh, oh! I was I didn't see that. Which value would that have to be? Yeah, for theta equals ninety, uh, plus yeah. k three sixty. And then. Sin theta may not equal to negative one. Mm, mm, mm. So this would be 90 plus k360. Actually, it would be 90 plus k180, I think. Um, yeah, because it'd be like that over there and over there. Yeah, so this is k180. So I need to explain that. Why it's 180. 
Was there a candy vibes uh, later? Yeah, because I yeah, feel so a little bit. Uh, the, the, the cost graph looks like that. So it's zero over here and over here. So that's yes. But um, when we look at our cost diagram, mm -hmm. zero actually gets talked about as positive. Um, so the 90 is over here. But then we also yeah. look where else is called positive. It's over here. And so we, we kind of think of it as being positive over there. Okay. So this one is 90. And then this one is 180 minus theta, which is um which ends up being uh 270. Sorry, 180 plus 90, which equals 270. Hmm. It's a little bit confusing, but it's it's you kind of think of the cos as being uh sorry in this this sorry this quadrant here. Um, but um, yeah, I actually think of it as being in this quadrant and saying 180 plus the 90 gives us 270. Okay. Um, basically, it's over here and over here. The, the okay, best okay. way is to, is to, to just know your, your cos graph. Okay. Because, the, because then you can see it's there. Oh, uh, because it's 180 degrees apart from each other. Yeah, see, it's 90, and then another 90, and then another, and then this is 270. But, okay. And so that represents on the graph where I've done the blue dots here. Okay. It's okay. kind of like it's saying at 90 over here. And then it's kind of like it's saying over here. Um, 360, you could think of it as being in this quadrant as being saying 360 minus 90, right? Mm. Well, 360 minus 90 is 270. Yeah. So it is in this quadrant. It is in this quadrant. Zero is considered positive. Meaning it's in this quadrant and this quadrant, meaning it's 90 and 360 minus 90, which is 270. But we, okay. don't say, we don't say 270 because 90 plus K180 gives us the 270. Hmm. Okay. It's a little bit trickier, that one. And then, of course, sine theta can't be equal to negative one. Yeah. Um, so that's in again uh, this quadrant here and this quadrant here. Um, when we see the cos graph and the sine graph is over here. The sine. <laughs> so it can't be there. Okay. I can sort of understand it yeah so um we see that 180 plus 90 is 270 mm. we also see mm. 360 minus 90 is also equal to 270 do you want me to go over that okay. again? you want me to go over that again see uh please sir Okay, so the sine graph is the one I've drawn in yellow. Yeah. So the sine graph, it's sine to the, when when you solve that sine theta, you know the bottom can't be zero. So sine theta plus one cannot equal zero. So therefore, mm. sine theta cannot equal negative one when you move it across. Yeah. So negative tells us the quadrant. So where is sine negative in these two quadrants here? Yes. So now what I do is I go sine to the minus one of 90 in my calculator. Sorry, sine to the minus one of one, not minus one. And I get 90. Are you happy with that? Okay, yes, yes. Because the negative told me the quadrant and the mm. one told me the angle. So it's these two angles here. Well, this 
quadrant here, the, the C quadrant here, this, the, the, this class quadrant, that's 360 minus theta. You happy yes. with that? And 360 minus 90 is 270. So we get 270 there. And so the period will also be, well, not period, but the, oh yeah, period. So the period will also be uh, 180 degrees. And um, no, no, it'll be 360. Um, oh. Because what's going to happen is we also it's also negative in the tan quadrant. Yes. And so the tan quadrant is 180 plus theta, right? Yes. Which is 180 plus 90, which also gives us 270. <clears throat> so here we do get the same answers, but they're they're in they're over here. They're not on opposite. So I don't have one up here. See, see with the blue. Mm -hmm. With the blue, I had it here. And here for the cos. So it repeats every 180. For the yes. yellow, I have it here and then again over here. They're both over here. Because one's 180 plus 90, which is 270. And one's 360 okay. minus 90, which is also 270. Yes. So we so the answer is is 270 plus K360. 270 plus K360. Okay. For the sign part. Um, I can make sense. You see, you see the sign graph repeats every negative one, every 360 degrees. Over here. Yeah. You see that it goes there. And then if I was to come back there again, another 360 degrees, every full wavelength. Mm. That's something mm. a bit of a okay. Okay, so so just remember the sign repeats 360 when it's negative one. Um, but it repeats 100 every 180 when it's zero. I think that's the, the kind of the easy way to think about it. Yeah, yeah, I think I think uh, I understand now. Okay, so if so, it's like hmm. if, if it's not like in on like the origin line on the x-axis, then uh, then it would obviously then it would be uh, k times 360. Yes. Yes, only for, uh, for 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 the for the the peaks, right? The the one. So it's the that's why the the one and the zero are slightly trickier because they yeah. fall, they fall on the boundaries. Mm. Okay, so I think I, I think you understand that. Yes, sir. Judging by what you just told me, is absolutely correct. Okay. Okay. So because I did get a little bit suspicious about it because our teacher would like make the period 180 degrees and then like another one being 360 degrees. And I wouldn't be I, I didn't understand where she would like get it from, but yes, understanding the origin on the x-axis will determine whether it's gonna be 180 or not. Yes. So the zeros are 180 and the ones are 360. Okay. Yeah, so let's just go over that. One more time, I guess. So it's starting to look at me. Okay, so we know our sign graph looks like this. And so negative one repeats every 360 degrees. We can see that. Yes. So, you know, um, negative one, um, that would then be 270 plus K360. Because it starts over here. And that's 360, 360, because it's like a circle, 363. So we have to do that. And the zero, as you said, will repeat every 180 degrees because it's on the x axis. So we see that it repeats 90, it says 180, then another 180, then another 180. And the same for the cos. Um, Okay. Now, positive one for the sign okay. is 90 plus K360, because that's going to be over there. Yes. So the negative one, let's do the negative one, I think. Over there. Okay, but now the thing is that we kind of don't. 
they they we don't learn the, I like to use this because I it is always easier for me because I you know of the physics and knowing the, what the graphs look like and, and you know uh, a sign in the cos graph is a perfect way to represent um electricity like voltage uh, um, you know any rotation or move any wave it's a it's a great way to 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 um mathematically look at a wave so it's a very handy trick graphs in physics but in maths you're kind of more using this thing okay so i just want to go over because i made a little bit of a mess there was three the theta and then this is 180 minus theta and 180 plus theta and 360 minus theta, right? Yes. And this is cost. And so when we got that the sign was positive, well, sorry, the sign was negative, we therefore knew it was here and here. <laughs> and then when we say sign to the minus one of 90, we get, sorry, sign to the minus one of one, we get is 90. And so this allowed us to do 360 minus 90, giving us the 270. Okay. Because when I put a 90 here, I get 270. But when I put it in here too, 180 plus 90, I also get 270. Mm -hmm. so, so it's basically on the cusp, it's on this boundary over here. And so it's yeah. like, it's in both graphs, but it's in neither. Do you know what I mean? It's I do follow, yeah. Yeah. Um, and so it's it's nice and easy to see here. Um because and that's why you only get the one answer. Because if you had say negative 0 0.5, okay, so let me draw that with in orange. Do you see I get nicely, I get two answers. Yeah. I get the 360 minus to get that answer and the 180 plus to get that answer. But as soon as I drop to this point here at negative one, it's suddenly that line that I would do is a tangent. And so it only touches it once, whereas anywhere else it touches it twice. So that's why we only get the one answer for the sign. Okay. Happy with that? Yes, sir. Okay, good. I just wanted to go over that again. And then the cos, I don't need to go over that again, right? Are you okay with that? I'm all good with this, sir. Perfect. Okay. Cos graph, doing it in the red here. Yeah. So. Okay. Uh, let's clear everything. Uh, yes, sir. And let's do now 1.3.1. It's important to go through like that because I don't want you to just be able to answer that question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want you to answer anything now related to sign where you have to look at cos and sine and, and, and figure it out and one and zero. Now, hopefully any question you get, you should yeah. be able to at least understand it. So if you if you can't work it out, on the cost diagram, if you are struggling, you know, draw the draw the graph as well, just in your head, just to visualize it. Okay. Okay. Now this one here is just just sort of going through basic steps, right? Uh, uh, oh, so like taking the three to the outside to get minus yeah. two thirds, and then yeah, and then of course I want shift to for the minus one, of, and and so this is again the idea of. The, uh, the quadrant story. Yes, the negative tells you the quadrants. Quadrants. So which quadrants am I looking at? Uh, you'll be looking at uh, your third and fourth quadrant. Yeah, and so this is exactly what I've just done, but now I'm not. I'm going to get two answers. So I don't, no, I'm not dealing with one. I'm dealing with negative two over three. So we're going to get two answers. So. Our reference angle would probably be forty one comma eight one degrees. Okay, forty one comma. I'm just gonna say comma eight. You can do the more accurate one. Um, okay. 
So yeah, that's great. So I can then, um, now I'm going to say four theta minus 20, um, but now it's the 41 comma three, right? 41 comma eight. 41 comma eight. Plus, but like plus 180 degrees no. because you're in the third. Uh, K360. Sorry, I've confused you there. Sine is always yeah. 60, the K360, always. Oh, I see what okay. you mean. Um, are you yeah. talking about this, this one here? Yeah, talking about the quadrant story. Yes, 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 yes. No, you are right. Um, okay, so good. Um, so this is uh, 180. Let me do this one. 180 plus 41.8 plus K360. No, that, that, that's better, hey? Yes, sir. Because you, you always take this angle here and you make it equal to 180 plus the reference angle. So that, mm. you make, so, so, so that goes in there. So would I like take the four to the other side first, or would I first calculate one hundred and eighty plus forty one comma? Yeah, it doesn't. Eight. It doesn't matter. Um, I would I would take all the angles across. Um, so I would do the minus twenty two. So this will be, um, two hundred and forty one comma eight. So I would say four theta equals two forty one comma eight plus k two sixty. And therefore, theta equals, and now you divide this by four. I assume you're doing that, right? 60. Yes, sir. Comma. Sixty point plus k times ninety. And then the and then the other one. The other quadrant. Quadrant four, just the three sixty minus. Yeah. So. So what what we end up with because you know so I think I showed you this last time because mm -hmm. if, remember this is the three sixty minus the two quadrants. Um, yes, sir. And so we're saying three sixty minus the forty one point eight. Plus K360, right? Because it's it repeats every 360 always. You yes, see. So these actually go, this this one cancels with one of these. Um, and so it's actually negative 41, comma 8 plus K360. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's just it's a, yeah, I could say 360 minus 41, comma 8, also fine. Maybe that's easier for you. And then you're going to get... I think it's a little bit easier for me, sir. Okay, so then you're going to get 318.2 plus K360. Would that be better? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, in some memos, you may see this. That's the, the, that's the reason why. It's because they just cancelled this 360 with one of these. Because this K is an integer. So it could mm -hmm. be 360, it could be C M and So they say, well, if it's 360, they would just cancel each other out. Yes, sir. Um, it's not going to affect your answer. <clears throat> because in this one, we actually have to get the different solutions. Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. So let's do the one that makes the most sense for you, which is the 318.2. Yes, sir. So theta equals... 318. Oh no, wait. We still got to do all the rest of the work. Yes, sir. Let's write six months. You see? Yes, sir. Okay, so you had four theta minus 20 equals. 318.2 yes, K360, right? 
Yes, sir. <clears throat> so then I then I got uh four theta is equal to three hundred and thirty eight point two plus k times three sixty and then divided the sides by divided the other side by four and I got theta is equal to eighty four point double five plus k times ninety. Perfect. Okay, excellent. So that that those will be two answers. Yes, um yeah did as i say the memo may have a slightly different answer to this but it won't it won't affect it'll still be right um, yes, sir. It, you know as i say if they cancel the 360s early on now now then it's just now we just pick all the, the answers that are between these right so hmm. can i mean do we need to do them? 60.45, 84.55, add 90 to that, 150.45, add 90 uh, to this one. So for some reason, I thought that we had to do that also in the first question still, but that just only ask for the general solution instead of like, like calculating in between the periods. Mm -hmm. Um, and then it's also the, all the negative ones when you take it, take it all minus 90 minus. So it looks like there'll be about eight solutions. Yo. So, so would I take the 60.45 subtracted by 90 and then subtracted by 90 yeah. again? Yeah. Okay. So you should get, it'll be, if you take 90 off the first time, you get minus 30, 29.45 or something. And yeah, minus 29.55, so. 55, yeah. And then you can take another 90 off as well, and it will still fall within the domain. And you'll, and, good, one more. and you'll do it for the 84 point. And you'll do it for, yeah, the 84 yeah, So it's quite a lot of uh, 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 specific solutions. Yeah. Okay, so it's going to kick us off in a minute. So I will stop the recording there. And then... <laughs> um, I'll just start the meeting again. Okay, sir. So.